Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Experience Point, your favorite all queer cast podcast. Thanks for sticking with us after some of the audio issues we had. We finally have that and the video recording issues taken care of. It'll be about two more weeks before all of the fixes go live because we do have a bit of a backlog. But once it does, I think you'll be super impressed with the changes. If you follow us on Twitter and Facebook, you'll know that we had a a poll go out asking about what you'd want in a giveaway because we are nearing some pretty big milestones in our podcast. We're about to hit 3,000 total listens and... And we're about to have 150 plus Twitter followers. It's been super exciting for all of us. We love hearing from you and we're super excited for it. So with our poll, we asked what you would want. And it turns out that what you want are either dice or guest spot. And it seems to be equal. So I guess we'll just do both. So we'll get on that in the next few episodes. So check us out on Twitter at EQ Points to know when it goes live. As always, we appreciate everyone who listens and enjoys our show. We hope you'll recommend us to your friends and give us high ratings wherever you listen. It's important to all podcasts, which is why we all ask. Also, we'd love to give a shout out to Roll to Fail. They're an amazing show. And if you are on the lookout for other Starfinder podcasts, you cannot go wrong with them. They are funny and ridiculous in completely different ways than we are. This episode of Experience Points, we learn what the heck going on, where bra is, where we are, and the contemplative size matters. So let's get on with the episode 24, Size Queen. Greetings, adventure hookers, and welcome to Experience Points, your favorite all-queer Starfinder real play podcast. I am your host and GM, Miu, and joining me today is our fabulous cast. Hello, I'm Kelric, and I play Angus. Angus. That's who I play. I play Angus. And I am Brit, and I play Mordax and Silverblade. Hi, I am Kenny, and I play Absco Cash. And we have joining us today a very special new player at the table. Hi, I'm Steph, and I'll be playing Eos Nabari. Welcome, Steph. We're super excited to have you. Woohoo! Yes, we are. So, George has been asked to recite his log today. So, let's go see what's going on in George's mind. Uh, personal log. Uh, George. Start eight. Today. So, everything has come together now. Uh, I feel kind of bad deceiving everybody like this. This has to be done. They've gotten too wrapped up in this and need to be brought on board. Final psych test is done. I always hated the derelict ship program. All those ghosts and ghouls and nothing making a lick of sense. But, uh, they got through it with flying colors. Never stopped. Not even as the ship was blowing up around them. Now, uh, we get to see if they'll accept our offer. Uh, Starfinders are taking an odd approach. These are odd circumstances. If anyone can figure out what's going on, it's them. Or else I'll eat my shiny sequin cape. George out. Nice. So, last time, with our Spooktober Spectacular, you y'all went through a... Well, you woke up in a derelict ship. All kinds of weirdness happening. Fought your way to the reactor, where there was a huge reactor breach, and everything blew up. And then you woke up in a room, and... George came to say hi, and apparently George is part of the Starfinders. That's where we pick up, with the three of you in a recovery room. George standing there, and you've just found out you're in some sort of Starfinder society, having passed some sort of test. George, I just want to be clear. Uh, yeah. What's happened is you're doing? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean no, not really. No, no. I, I'm, I mean, there are a lot of questions here. George, did... Does that mean the Starfinders have infiltrated Solomon's gang? Group? Movement? Uh, well, uh, I- I'm not sure I can tell you that. Hmm. Well, perhaps you can tell us how you got on to Solomon's little base. Oh, uh, well, that's easy. I, I signed up. <laughs> so, Mordax has a look on her face like really starting to look as, like, ticked off as you think a mouse can look. (laughs) She isn't saying anything yet. Pretty ticked off, actually. How do you sign up to be on whatever Solomon's thing is? Like, we know how Solomon came to 
boss because it, are you responsible for Gideon? Uh, no, no, no. So Gideon is totally separate from this. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I turn to um, uh, Absco turns to Mordax and says, "We have." A lot of history we should probably fill you in on once we're done with this. Uh, did did you make us lose? Oh. Huh? <laughs> oh, no, 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 uh, no. How far back does this go? Oh, uh, with you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> because with, if you with, with. made me lose in front of everyone... That was really embarrassing. Oh, uh, uh, it's okay. Don't don't cry. Hey, hey, I, I didn't do it. I, I swear. <laughs> uh, don't I, cry. Mordax <laughs> looks at the most affronted you've ever seen a mouse. Look. I, I don't think this is going right. Hold, hold on. <laughs> and and he opens the door and he steps out and he closes the door and then he opens the door and steps in and goes, "Hi, it's good to see you guys awake." Uh. I think you're supposed to follow me now. <laughs> Do you know him? Uh, yeah. I mean, he is a part of our crew. I, I don't sort of that I know this person at all. Actually. Oh, well, I'm their tailor and a starfinder, apparently. Oh yeah, I guess that too, huh? I believe you'd call what this person is is a plant, and I begin to feel. Like, I'd already been feeling as if this, these other two people we've been working with have been just, you know, moving us around on it, like a game board. Now I feel like George has been a third player, and I'm starting to get really pissed off about it. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you're, you're misunderstanding. I, I'm more like a, a passenger. A passenger. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just a passenger that knows there is a board. Yeah. That's actually quite astute, George. Thank you. Well, where are we going? Uh, debrief. Or brief. I don't know which one it is. Before before we do any of that, how's Bra? Oh, bra. Bra's, Bra's perfectly fine. Bra's great. Bra's awesome. Very happy Bra. And how are we supposed to trust you that that's true? Absco, can you try to call oh, Bra? I, I still have my comms device, I'm assuming, or Absco still has their comms device. Yeah, Absco still has their comms device. You have oh, yeah. all, everyone has all their gear. No, nothing's been taken away. Uh, so Absco tries to race the ship. The look on George's face sort of pained like, oh crap, this isn't going to look good. As you try to raise the ship and get no response. Like the ship yeah. isn't even there. Huh. Now, now look, if you'll just come with me to this this debriefing briefing thing, it'll all make sense. I, I, I promise. Okay, you've, you've earned enough from us for this one thing at this point, George. We'll follow you to find out what's going on, but don't push it too far. No, no, just just, just come to this meeting, and if after that uh, you, you don't want to have anything to do with, do with me, I, I understand. We, we can part ways. It'll all be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mordox, uh, I'm not sure how much we're responsible for you being caught up in this and how much is completely separate or if all of us getting to know each other has been one big game and i look at george piercing just eyes like i don't know what you're what you're what you've been doing but i'm not happy about it whatever you decide to do i i, I understand but i want you to know that we didn't know anything about this and meeting you as far as we were concerned was a very happy circumstance what you what you how you decide to treat george is totally i, I support you 100 percent. i believe you this this Whatever he is, um, not uh, sure. Kasa uh, yeah, yeah. Kasafin Taylor, yeah. As he like waggles all four of his hands, doing spirit fingers. <laughs> I feel you're being very flippant, George, and I don't like it. <laughs> no, no, I'm. Oh my god! Look, look, just, just, just. Ah! Uh, and he Angus. just goes walking off down the hallway. <laughs> I can't even with these people. <laughs> hey. You know, you travel with them, you make them sequin uniforms, there's, a, there's no love. No love for me. Oh, Angus, I, th I, I think that he's earned enough of our, well, he's earned a chance. I think that we need to at least hear this out. And if all else fails, we'll leave and find the Zephyr. We've been in worse spots before. Uh, at least Gideon's not here. I get yeah, fuck that guy. Alright, I'm going to hop off of the recovery bed thing that I assume mm -hmm. we're on from the description. 
and hop mm-hmm. over to Silverblade and inspect Silverblade to make sure that nothing is weird about him. Yeah. Define okay. weird. Okay, your engineering check. <laughs> yeah, your engineering check as you check him over. We are one cranky crew. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, very much. I can't really blame you guys. <laughs> 29. You can tell that Silverblade has been completely repaired and buffed and everything by a master technician. Like someone put a lot of, I mean, you're you're trying to find something that they did wrong and you can't. Okay. Like Silverblade is back to exactly the condition you had him in before the fight. I'm going to go follow George now because I don't want to let him out of my sight for too long at this point. Yeah. I'm going to head out. I agree. Uh, I follow. Mordex, I'll assume. Yeah, I'll follow. Grumpy, grumpily following. <laughs> <laughs> George takes you to a nondescript door in a nondescript area. Like, you're not even exactly sure where you are. You're just in some sort of complex, obviously. Looks sort of like an office complex. Just hallways and doors that just have numbers on them. He opens up one of the doors and gestures for you to go inside. Well, after you, George. He shrugs all four of his shoulders and plods on in the door. Mm, Follow him in. You enter a room. It's a conference, very basic conference room. They got a screen for putting up any information along with their their projector. Table, long table, a number of chairs. Each each, uh, seat at the table has its own data pad built into the table. George Mm. goes and takes a seat next to, or stands at a chair next to a Lashunta woman at the head of the table. And... Steph, would you like to tell me what they see when they see your character sitting at this table? They see a Valaka, which is a humanoid husky. Um, her fur is mostly white with some dark gray and toffee patches. Her eyes are probably the most startling um, with some scarring in the fur around her eyes. They are all black with blue irises, so they probably stand out against that field of white. She's a, I hesitate to say imposing, but she's tall and probably looks like she could crush your head if she wanted to. Now, d- define tall, because Absco yeah, is about nice. seven foot. No, she's not as tall as Asco. They, Absco, <laughs> they, they don't get that tall. <laughs> she, she's six foot, which okay. is taller than me. So, Every, everyone's short compared to Absco. Yeah. <laughs> like, is Absco has to duck their head under under the lintel when they come in. Just that Angus as well with the horns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty but, much. So. You're taller than me. <laughs> yeah. The Lashunta woman stands there and looks around at all of you. She's very serious faced, wearing just uh, th- that same jumpsuit, the, the light gray with the goldenrod and cerulean trim as you enter. And she's just very stony faced. And once everyone's in, she just looks around the room and says, well, you have questions. Go. Okay. Where's our ship? The Zephyr, the bulk of it is in our salvage yard. Anything useful has been transferred to a separate vessel. Where's our crew member, Bra? He was a bioorganism. He has been de- he has been designated useful and uh, sent over to the other vessel. He is currently integrating with its systems. Are you? Saying- I'm sorry. Agent what? What's your name? Agent J. And are you saying you've confiscated one of my crew members? No. And what exactly are you saying? He has been transplanted. To what? And how does that impact on him being in my crew? She takes a seat, then gestures for you all to do the same. She says, "Well, that." Depends entirely on you. I'll sit down and say, explain. I was going to take well, the seat as well. Mordag sits, but she sort of sits like on her feet so that she can be tallish. <laughs> <laughs> Lashanta woman there and peers at each of you, and you get this feeling that she's just kind of like poking around the very outer edges of your mind. Space consent is sexy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Welcome. It's uh, rude. <laughs> looks a little startled for a moment before smiling. This is the first smile you've seen on this woman's face. Yep, you'll do just fine. Oh, well, thank you for your approval. I was so seeking that. I know you were. What What are we doing here? What do you want from us? Well, as you have probably surmised, you are somewhere in Absalom Station. You never left, and uh, I represent the Starfinder Society, or I should say a faction of the Starfinder Society. Have you heard of the Void? (laughs) Oh, no. No, I haven't. Sorry. Well, we are a... We are a rather secretive group. Part of the Starfinder Society. Uh, One might even, you know, some call us spies. We're, I guess, intelligence gathering. We keep an eye out for major events 
things that could catastrophically shift the balance of power any and particular direction. We tried to maintain balance within the Pact and the realms beyond. How did we get on your radar? You hired George. We hired a tailor, and that tipped us off to Starfinders. <laughs> as soon as, as, well, soon as they say <laughs> you hired George, I just say, fucking Kira. <laughs> so mad <laughs> arms. This is all. I look at Abs going. I'm like, this is all about Christ cursed arms. Arms. That's what this is about. And I'm pointing at George's arms. I'm like, that is why we're here. Well, they are nice arms. George looks very pleased at this compliment. Kind of, kind of, kind of subtly flexes a little bit. I look at him. Don't you even start. <laughs> Not in the mood. He immediately sh- drops his shoulders and hangs his head. All right. Please continue. Tell us about your... Agent J says, George here was deep undercover, investigating the entity known as Solomon. And then you hired him. And, well, recruited, hired, whatever. More like bully. And he's been keeping tabs on what's been going on. And when, you know, he's been sending reports back. All right. And so... What do you want from us, I guess, is the next question. I understand you've had a you've had dealings not only with the Solomon entity, but also with an entity known as Evelyn. Tell us what you mean by entity. Can't really call either of them people now, exactly, can we? Well, I can see that for Evelyn, but tell us more about why you would say Solomon is an entity rather than an android. How old do you think Solomon is? It's hard to tell with androids. So, can I access any of the... Stab in the dark. Can I access any of the... Can you access anything what? The spiders that I set up when we first... The spider slash worm things I set up as soon as we left Solomon when I was suspicious? Yeah. Do we a computer's check or what? Yep, computer's check. Hey, Oof. 12. Ugh. 12. Damn rolls already starting. All you can find are <laughs> manifests of like 27 crates of wheat. <laughs> 13 crates of dehydrated milk. Nothing. Okay, I'm going to say, based on our experience with this Solomon character and the impression you're starting to give, let's say 2,000 years old. Sure. Shot in the dark. Ab school. What's your number? I'm going to use my prof- my profession uh, investigator to okay. give a educated guess. Okay. 22? 22. You remember, I believe it was Kira that tried to like sense thoughts. Mm-hmm. And that Kira sensed something extremely old, like very, very, very ancient. Ancient in terms of the universe could be thousands of years. It would be really difficult to quantify, I'm sure. We have a suspicion that... What if, what if I told you that the entity that you know as Solomon, well, by our best estimates, is over 4,000 years old? I look at Absco. Mm-hmm. And I say, I think this goes in line with what we were talking about, where we th- thought that Solomon was trying to use us to get back at Triune for not being a part of it. Solomon definitely did have some thoughts on Triune. I Okay, Jay, tell us more. Well, put it simply, you seem to know the most about what's going on here. Gotten yourself nice and deeply involved, and we want to offer you a job. That's well, not... not a job, per se. We want to offer you a ship, a crew, and more or less a bottomless budget. Up until the <laughs> budget part, I had a whole lot of, I had a ship and crew, so I don't see what the big deal is here. But then a bottomless budget, and suddenly I'm like, my ears might have twitched a little bit. I'm like, bottomless budget, you say? So I, you know, I, I applaud you for approaching us and for giving us this opportunity, but one of the advantages that we had in, you know, working with Solomon as we were, is that we were small. We were fairly insignificant to Solomon, except for the fact that we were doing specific tasks for her. But with a big ship and being associated with the Starfinders, that anonymity goes away. How do you propose we get... Oh, no, 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 no. You, you understand you wouldn't be working for the Starfinders. No, no. Okay. Not on paper, not on any record. So, how would... You would be completely independent contractors. Interesting. A variety a, a variety of corporations have put together a, a super fund to fuel your expeditions. Can I do roll, roll a culture check to kind of see if I can wrap my head around that, like what that looks like? Yeah, 25. Uh, you're aware from your es- corporate espionage. In fact, you've investigated several of these that a number of corporations will oftentimes pool resources to send out an exploratory crew, a group of adventurers, with the understanding that they receive, as an investment, they receive cuts of whatever profits they make. Uh, a lot of, you know, it depends from, from group to group. Some of them will be for exploration. Some of them will be for, you know, mining surveys, things like that. Some of them are for much less 
up and up purposes. But this is a pretty standard thing that can happen. I'm going to turn to the Vlaka in the room and say, so what is your role in all of this? Why are you here? Eos um, tries to wipe her expression, which has been brow arced almost this entire time, and simply says, I'm a contractor just like you. I'm a medic. Really? And what do really? you know about this whole mission that they're trying to talk to us about now? I don't know. What do I know? This is the first <laughs> you're hearing about it. This is your briefing as well as theirs. They're briefing you as senior staff. Do I know anything about all of the other-ish they've been talking about, or should I roll for that? No, you did. This is all. This is the explanation you've gotten so far. <laughs> okay, I'm for it. I can work with that. She just kind of shrugs. I know probably less than you do. I got Abs- contacted for a job. Absco turns to Mordax and says, "You've been quiet." What are your thoughts on all of this? So I wanted to ask you if any of what everyone just said made any sense to me, if I had heard any inklings on the station about any of those words at all. You have heard that something happened in Eox, and you've heard the, the name Evelyn in relation to that. That's it. I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to sort of whisper this over to Absco. I, I just really think that maybe they got the wrong person. I'm, I don't really think I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You're supposed to be here. Well, thank you, Jay, for affirming what I was just going to say. Yes, I think that if we we're going to have a lead engineer, and I look over at Angus, do you agree that Mordax should be a lead engineer? Well, I like to give people more of a choice than saying, hey, this is a job you're taking now. So I think... Mordax has a little bit more agency on whether she's interested in taking on a, a position as a, a crew member. Although, Mordax, I will say, part of why we were spending time with you was because I was very impressed with your creation of Silverblade, and I was going to invite you to be on our very small crew of potentially five people. And Absco <laughs> says, yeah, we would never uh, uh, think of, you know, kidnapping people, putting them through tests, and then telling them that they have to go on to a ship. And I look over at Jay. Agent... <laughs> <laughs> Agent J kind of snickers as you say your crew of five people, and then she just reaches up with a remote and clicks, and the big screen opens up, showing you a ship that could fit like eight of your of the Zephyr inside easily, and still have room for a whole cargo load. Long, sleek, bristling with hard points. What the hell is that? Well, that's the ship we would like to commission you to captain. So so that whole little Mordax pep talk, Mordax's eyes were just huge and kind of going back and forth, looking at Angus and Absco, just back and forth and not saying anything. <laughs> and then as soon as we see the ship just backs up, eyes got even wider, still not saying anything. That's also the first time uh, Eos has seen the ship that she's been hired to be the medic on. I mean, she's probably seen ones that big before. So she's yeah. keeping a straight face. <laughs> it's it's a it's a combination explorer frigate. You can tell it's an old frigate hull that has been re- uh, refitted for exploratory purposes. Okay, <laughs> I don't know how. What would I roll for a composure check? <laughs> will save. Should we all roll one? <laughs> would it be a bluff? Yeah, go ahead. Diplomacy? Roll will saves. Let's let's just see. Will save. Oh, I mean, it's will saves to not be super impressed by this ship. Oh no, Absco's impressed. Nope. They're on the floor. <laughs> a nine doesn't seem to do yep. it. You're sure I couldn't bluff that I was okay? I mean, it seems... Oh, go ahead. Roll a bluff. Roll a bluff. <laughs> of a... all of us, Mordax is the most okay with this. <laughs> but Mordax is nope. still just, wow. Uh, I mean... does not improve a whole lot. <laughs> no. Alas. Angus, you're trying... You're, you're that 13. You're trying so hard to, like, show that you're... N- to be like, N- whatever, I've, I've seen ships like that, but you're, like, the thought of you. And you can tell Jay, Jay knows she's got you on the hook as she looks at you and goes, So what do you think, Captain Angus? I think I'd like to see the inside before I make any decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Absco turns I to George. you would. Absco turns to George and says, What do our new uniforms look like? <laughs> He, he seems to be risking a little bit of a smile, and he goes, I have plans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've never seen our dress pinks, have you, Mordax? <laughs> I- I'm sorry, dress pinks? Yes, I said dress pinks. Is that the problem? 
I'm sorry, I still haven't got your name. What's your name? Sorry, I haven't gotten yours either. I'm Eos Nabari. Ah. And you? I'm Angus Brahman, and this is Obstacle Cash. They are our pilot. And then I point to Mordax, and I say, and this is our new friend, Mordax. I, I, uh, yeah, it's Mordax Moose Anonymous uh, from, from Absalon Station. Yeah, new friend. Pretty much the whole time that um, Absco has been sitting there, since George mentioned the new idea for costumes, you've heard this very high pitched, like, <laughs> <laughs> and Eos, what exactly would your role on the ship be? Chief medic. At least that's what I've been told. I look back at Jay. Eos has been has already been contracted as chief medical officer. We have a few other positions open, like pilot. Chief Engineer, Captain. I'm not stepping on a foot on that ship unless I'm the pilot. And what exactly are you expecting? And Jay just like looks at you at, at <laughs> Angus and is just like, What exactly would you be expecting us to do if we were to take on this opportunity? Keep doing what you've been doing. Investigate Solomon and Evelyn. So we can go back and toilet paper my parents' house again? <sighs> With this baby, you can toilet paper them from 1,500 kilometers in space. Done. <laughs> you sure it's not going to be a glitter bomb? <laughs> just just napalm them with glitter? You can, you could glitter bomb versus from space in this sucker. We, we don't want to start an intergalactic war here. I think for Absco and myself, and it sounds like Eos, the next step is to look inside the ship, and then we can talk more about how, what these thoughts you have about keeping this information from Solomon, who can apparently hack into anything and leave no traces, and Evelyn, who can show up out of nowhere, turn into a silver dragon and take stuff, and then arrange for a ship from a dying planet to show up and give us a new drift dr engine. I'd love to hear how you plan on out outsmarting those two, but I think th seeing the ship is our next steps. Mordox, yeah. I, I, I see no point in making any presumptions on what you will be doing, but it would be nice to have someone along who I feel like we could trust. I like you. Thank you. And I like you too. Absco. Oh. But you, you lady, Jay, <laughs> I need mm -hmm. you to look me in the face and tell me you had nothing to do with how that fight turned out. She, she looks at you and she raises her hand and says, I, Agent J, had absolutely nothing to do with you losing that fight. It was a draw. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be specific. <laughs> Do I believe her? <laughs> Give me a sense motive. That was a bullshit call is what that was. <laughs> well, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> a nine. Nice. You are suspicious. All right, your ship's but shining. she has done what you have told her to do. Looked you in the face and said she had nothing to do with it. Okay, but Silver Silverblade gets a job too. Okay. And we still get to fight. Ah, you're welcome to build however many Silver Blades you wish and fight them wherever you want to. Silver Blade is unique. There's not more than one. Just wait till you see the workshop. Okay. Okay. Sounds like we're ready to go take the next step and look at the ship, check on Bra, and then we can talk about what exactly you're thinking and look at the budget. <laughs> Starfinder accounting. <laughs> <laughs> Why we play. Well, we'll have to take a shuttle up there, so, or out, out to the space dock. Oh my gosh, can, can the rest of this episode be, like, from the shuttle, kind of like in Star Trek 1, where we're just, like, panning around the ship for, like, 30 minutes? <laughs> no. Yes. No. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's that the end of the episode right there. <laughs> riveting, <laughs> riveting podcast right there, where we just describe the exterior of the ship for 30 minutes. When you say we, you mean me. But there has to be inspirational music in the background with plenty of horns. Now, just to make sure you understand that if you do turn this down and you tell anyone about any of this, I will have to kill you. She says with a very friendly smile. You could try. That's the spirit. Oh, goody. And then she says, here, these will help brief you on what we know about Solomon. Consider this a good faith well, that overture. Would start. Thank you. Yes, we'd love to start with some good Oh, yeah. And she hands you a dossier. Okay. So how long is the shuttle flight over? The shuttle flight out will take a, about an hour or so. Is it long enough? Enough time for you to at least go over the bullet points and, and get a, and skim the, the dossier. Awesome. I would take it and start doing it. I can give you the, I will give <laughs> you the bullet points here. Across the top, in bright red, it says confidential for Starfinder eyes only. It has something redacted 
and then it says eight, you know, like, it looks like a name, and then dash 18 dossier. Bullet points. The android known as Project 18, Solomon, their holy officer Solomon Tenet, etc., is the, indeed the same entity. This entity is an ancient machine AI, a prototype created by the then Church of Abadar as an experimental adventurer for higher product. The 18 entity has managed to become the majority shareholder of Abadar Corp and is the de facto chief executive priest of Abadar Corp. Hmm. Short term goal? Acquire slash recover relic known as Adventure Hook. See section 113.15-EOX-Adventure Hook. Reason? <laughs> Unknown. Seems to think it is a key to something. Long-term goal? Uncertain. The 18 entity is still rebuilt, rebuilding their memory banks and is slowly rebuilding pre-gap databanks, ultimate designs, uncertain slash evolving. Allies has recently sponsored a small band of unaffiliated adventurers, went to great pains to orchestrate events to bring them together. Reasons? Unclear. Suggestion? Rec Recruitment. Adversaries. Only one. The entity known as Eve. Existence confirmed. Identity unknown. Whereabouts unknown. Relationship to 18 unknown. Appears to be interplanar shapeshifter with considerable magical ability. Okay, I thought her name was Evelyn. So From what you can tell, wrong. Eve, Evelyn. Yeah, and, and that is marked that the Eve slash Evelyn. Is that... The extent of it? That is, that is the bullet points. That's what you'll get from skimming it. it in depth. It looks like they this has been a wide ranging operation. In fact, from what you can tell, this operation dates back pre gap. Wow. Oh. Yes, pre-gap that this was started, this investigation into 18, it's only really been recently stepped up. But it also appears that they re they reference the entity that you know as Solomon as 18 mm -hmm. or Project 18. Well, I think when we get to the point where it's, the bullet point says they went to great pains to get us, Absco, myself, Kira, and Phaedra mm -hmm. together, I would like to dive into that to see what they know about Gideon. And if that is completely Solomon's doing. It was. Oh. Solomon God. used Gideon to get you all there and get you stranded and then used you to kill off the loose end. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll let that ruminate in the back of our minds for a bit. I look at Eos and Mordax and I say, so what does all of this mean to you? Anything? So was there information in this log about how they had been monitoring Eos and Mordax as well? Not in that dossier, no. Okay. Yeah, Mordax is just sort of like with one hand sort of just like clutching onto the blade and their hand thing and shaking her head. Okay. Eos just kind of looks up and is like, I would almost want to meet this Solomon. Oh, I'm it sure is. we'll we'll grab the chance to. Seem like a fucked up individual. I we were not super fans, but it did a member of our previous Well, group. I think some of you were. was quite smitten, and at least for the rest of us, it seemed a little obvious that she was being paid. I suppose that's the smallest of 18s. I guess I don't even know what to call something this old and whatever they're trying to do. It's a lot to take in. It is. One yeah. additional point of clarification in this log mm -hmm. that, go that mm -hmm. highlights the entirety of the adventures thus far, is there mention of uh, how they got certain information out of a certain other <laughs> Yusoki. No. <laughs> That's good. So there's no record of Yusoki no. fishing. No. We call it Yusoki. There, there is no record of the Yusoki fishing because if I remember correctly, George wasn't with you then. Correct. Oh, I, I, I know. I just didn't know right. if there was right. like, yeah. spy. Okay, yeah. No. Getting their ship fixed up and then ending up on the asteroid Thing. with with 18 slash Solomon. And then George, it gets very detailed after they get hired, after George gets hired. It yeah, becomes extremely detailed. <laughs> no, Isoki fishing is not exactly mentioned in here. And at this point, Agent J, if you look out your view screen, you'll see your ship. And there it is. Big as day, bright gleaming engines, just idling, long, sleek. You can see it just bristling with hard points. The, the deflectors are giving a nice glimmering sheen. This is a beautiful ship. This is, this is tens of millions of credits. What color is it? That's gonna ask the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Asking the real question. It's a light gray with goldenrod and cerulean trim. <laughs> <laughs> and as you come up, you see that some of the trim is being repainted this beautiful hot pink. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. Well, at least they know what we like. 
as you get close, the ship seems the 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 giant ship seems to shudder and jump around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's what? bouncing around in its cradle. Uh, you can see you start seeing the the thrusters like firing sporadically as it just bounces around. Eos just cocks her head and is like, is "There a system malfunction?" Oh, no. that's just bra. No, um, that would be our fr- our crewmate. I turn to Jay and I'm like, can we get comms to the ship, please? She hits a few buttons and just gestures. There you go. Bra, you need to calm down. We're almost there. Oh my god! 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 <laughs> Where were you? You left, and then they came and took me, and they told me they were bringing me to a new house, and now I'm in this ship. This one's big! <laughs> I thought I was big before, but now I'm huge! <laughs> <laughs> and like the engines just are like firing is like huge <laughs> yeah we we need we need you to calm down buddy you're you're going a little okay, bit too hot okay. there <laughs> <laughs> that that's a good bra the, the the ship begins to settle down and it's just like trembling like it's idling but someone's got their foot on the gas and it's just who's that they sound fun oh if you decide to be the chief engineer you'll be working very closely with them very closely indeed they sound, sound like a child i that they they do not too far off the mark they're lovely all right so you get to the ship, dock, the hatch opens, Agent J gets out to lead the way into the airlock. The door on the other side opens with a hiss, whoosh. She steps out and calls Captain on deck and steps out of the way for Angus as 15 crewmen wearing light gray jumpsuits with goldenrod and cerulean snap to attention and salute. Well, I'll just walk right on board, <laughs> look everyone over. <laughs> And I'm going to do a culture check to see if I know what to say for, like, at ease or whatever. Probably not, because I only have a plus three. Sixteen. Hmm. Sure. At ease or whatever sounds about right. Hi. At ease. Go about your business. <laughs> they do look a little confused, but yeah, they drop to at ease and all stand around looking very awkward now. What? <laughs> I don't know who they are. Uh, Morax is walking into the situation where she knows she's absolutely out of her element, but she doesn't want any of these new people to know this. So she's going to try to put on her little, like, about to go to a robot fo- uh, fight, you know, stance, you know, stand up as tall as possible, which is not very tall, and uh, just look real serious, walk in, like, yep, I'm supposed <laughs> to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. Eos is trying to play it cool like they contacted her for a chief medical officer but she was not expecting a ship this big <laughs> and i'm sure this is her first time like in charge of the <laughs> as medical officer so it's like nope I'm, I'm, this is not totally awesome uh, what's absco's yeah. reaction uh, absco really is just like all right, can I get to the bridge? <laughs> like the, they don't really register that there are other people here. They're they're one track focused on their element. They want to start joyriding. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's very accurate. And what does George do? George just stands there, looking around, smiling. Uh huh. Kind of, kind of keeps like side eyeing you guys to see, side eyeing y'all to see how, how have you forgiven him yet? So where's your really excited buddy? Well, you're inside him. The ship is raw. And over the intercom, you just hear bra. So your friend's an AI. Uh, 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 bra is organic intelligence so an oi which is integrated with the ship that's amazing yeah. how did you do that well bra did it themselves we sort of had some issues we'll catch you all up we'll do a briefing after we figure out whether this is going to work out for us so I turn- you can just hear like going from speaker to speaker down the hallway like <laughs> zipping right in front of you i'm huge <laughs> <laughs> I imagine like running lights are going along as you hear the voice. Oh kind of yeah, just like down lights the are going nut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How is Jay <laughs> reacting to this? Grimacing. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Jay and I'm like, you didn't have a whole lot of choices for who would be in charge of the ship, did you? She grimaces at <laughs> you and says, "We did. We just well, we wouldn't have taken Bra if we weren't recruiting you. And if you turn us down, we'll put Bra back in the Zephyr." I don't know if the Bra would let you. They're huge, in case you haven't heard. <laughs> I'm huge! Okay, so why don't we get on to this tour? 
show us around. A number of the uniform crew step forward and snap their heels. And she says, these are the department heads, and they'll be showing you each to your pertinent stations, as I'm sure you'll want to examine them first. Hi. That sounds acceptable. Do you want to all go together, or do you want to separate? I look at the Mordax, Absco, and Eos. I think staying together would make sense. I definitely want to know the whole ship. Huh? What? I... Oh, right. I'm so excited to meet Bra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Then let's start with engineering, please. You are led to the lift, which will take you down 17 decks. Engineering. What? (laughs) Okay, 17 decks. Well, you entered at the bridge, so you go down to the bottom for engineering. A lot of the decks, as is explained to you on the way down, yes, you're going down 17 decks. Most of the decks are full of mechanical stuff. Like, the the heart of engineering is down at the bottom, but the, like, next three decks above it are all engineering stuff. Wow. So there's a whole deck given over to just quarters, a whole deck given over to <laughs> entertainment. Sorry, you said quarters, and I was like, coins? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a whole deck given over to, to little silver coins. So that we can all be Scrooge McDuck. We can all just dive in whenever we want. <laughs> and this is the ballroom. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, sorry. Four decks for engineering, <laughs> one deck for crew quarters. Yep, one deck for crew quarters. There's there's a deck for crew quarters. There's, you know, the entertainment deck. There's the mess deck. They've got a deck that is given over to workshops and laboratories. Everything you could want on this ship right there. Ooh. Beautiful. With plenty of room to expand as you, you know, plenty of empty space that's cargo bays. Because there's, there's three whole decks that are nothing but cargo. Wow. So... We have a little bit of everything, don't we? I turn asking you to Jay. Well, who knows what you're going to need when you're tracking down interdimensional entities. All right. And what what is this crew complement? Like, wh- what are we managing? So as you have a full crew of approximately 100, not including officers. How are we supposed to trust all of them? You're their boss. Absco kind of grimaces and shrinks back a little bit at the concept of having to like interact with so many people and have to like trust that they'll do what they say all right this this will take some getting used to the doors open on the engineering level mordax I kind of imagine I'm walking into this room like that scene in Beauty and the Beast where Beast shows Belle the library. <laughs> yeah. Very much. Very, very much. Do you, do you put your arms out and do you do like a little twirl as you are looking around at everything? <laughs> I really think that I do. Yeah, like I'm just going to start touching stuff. I mean, no judgment. <laughs> as you walk up, to the the drift casing for the drift drive you can tell it is like top notch top of the line drift drive and as you touch it the whole ship sort of shudders and you hear the voice over the intercom Woo-hoo, that tickled <laughs> hi are you bra i'm bra who are you i'm mordax hi mordax Look what I can do! And the drive begins to just power up before just powering down. Okay, you're really neat. What do you think about hollow vids? Suddenly, there is a hollow vid. <laughs> do you want to be friends? <laughs> we are friends! All right, I'm in. I'm going to turn to Jay and just be like, all right, I'm in. All right, yep. Woo! And you hear, you hear like alarms going off as the ship just spins. <laughs> Oh, you realize just looking at the the readouts, the ship is just sitting there, just spinning, and all the people outside are like freaking out that there's a ship spinning in the dockyard. So this is Silverblade. I built Silverblade. Silverblade's really neat. Silverblade's probably gonna want to be your friend too, but there's a lot of rules to being friends with us, and and we can go over that later. But yeah, this is gonna be great. <laughs> as as you say that, this white wispy kind of fungus comes out from like between the seams of the of the drift casing here, and like reaches out towards Silverblade blade and just kind of caresses it and like almost melds into it for a moment before retreating back in and goes silver blades cool oh okay well that was that was really weird and you're gonna have to explain to me what that was all about but uh yeah (laughs) what the fuck was that (laughs) you know watching that like taking a step back like what the fuck (laughs) eos that's our our crew member bra that's the fungus 
it melded with the ship to give it the capabilities and intelligence it seems to have. As our chief medical officer, you and Mordax here will probably have to work pretty closely to, to maybe get an idea of what kind of assistance they will need if we get into any sort of battles. Well, I hope Bra doesn't mind some research and tests. Oh, what's research? Test, test, research, test. And you can hear, you can see the data banks flipping through as it pulls up definitions of like research and test and goes, Bra thinks he will like research. Well, then we'll get along well as we figure out how the hell you did this. (laughs) I'm assuming Eos has never seen a living ship like this quite before. Nobody has. They they got this like way out in the middle of nowhere space because absco went we're going this way to run away from their parents so there's engineering absco turns to jay and and says i'll need a full list of crew compliment she literally just hands you a manifest and then i turn to angus and say i think i need to expand my duties into being a security officer well that sounds perfect Yes, I think that and would ab- be. After hearing the amount of crew compliment, Absco's expression, which is normally fairly expressionless, looks slate, like no, like completely stern. I think that the only time you've seen Absco like this is when you first met them. Okay. If you really want to make sure. And now where would you like to visit? Medical's on the way between here and the bridge. I was just going to suggest that. Oh, what were you going to say, Mordax? I was going to say, if you really want them to think that you are really, really good at laying down the law, you could walk around with silver blade with you for a little bit you can't have him all the time but you could have him for a little bit and he could stand behind you looking real tough you know hmm we'll talk we'll talk i think the next step is to check out the med bay because absco and i once once we get back to the bridge i think we'll have plenty to keep ourselves occupied indeed so, all right Eos, let's go check you enter the, the lift again and jay reaches for the panel but then just kind of stops and goes brah could you take us to med bay deck five and sure enough the lift just starts going wow. Bra, do you and know there you music are music to play while we ride the elevator <laughs> okay there's there's this and then all of a sudden you get this voice oh, i expect nothing less at this point <laughs> the doors for the lift open and you are at medical this place is huge absolutely loaded with all kinds of tech there are scanners and research stations there's a botany bay where you can grow whatever you need to i mean cryo storage whatever you could dream of is here this is probably the first point not that you guys have been known eos long where she looks like she's relaxed a little bit she's in her element and inside she's like a bubbly little kid but <laughs> she's trying to keep it cool on her face because she's just walked into candy land come on eos you're a doctor yes you are a professional <laughs> You have been in war zones. Do not act like a 12 year old just because you've walked to your greatest fantasy and you get to see the galaxy. And about, uh, yeah, there's like three other nurses in here all doing maintenance stuff and preparing samples. And they all look up and snap to attention as you walk in. Oh, please continue your work. We can get acquainted later. Yes, doctor. I'm assuming you'll want to get acquainted with your space here i think so yeah to the bridge bridge the lift doors open up to the bridge and you have the arrays of stations for the senior officers and the bridge crew the helm station is super sleek the four is taken up by a massive view screen and sitting right in the very center of it all is the captain's chair and again as you step on deck one of the ensigns that's working on uh something on the computers looks up and calls out captain on deck and everybody snaps to attention at their station looking straight at you angus hi at ease what about your business <laughs> <Very straightforward. laughs> they do so <laughs> I don't need to do some sort of speech. I'm still just getting acquainted. And I'd like to go look at the captain's chair and see what there is to see as far as controls and stuff. As you approach the captain's chair, would you like to have a seat? I would. Out of character, is anyone else picturing the Starship Enterprise? Oh, oh yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Very much. That's <laughs> yes. You sit in your seat and Jay reaches over and taps a button on the chair and a hollow vid screen pops up and you can see the menu where you can pull up any information on systems, ships, uh, on the ship systems, anything from sensors. You can see anything and everything you would need to from there. And then she taps another button on the other arm of your chair and it pops up with basically a, a radar screen of the surrounding space with sensor sweeps showing you where everything is. That's amazing. I'll spend a few minutes just going through that and mm -hmm. Absco, do you have do you have a station to go check out as well? I, I imagine like there's like a, a helm station, but I'm actually consumed with the, the personnel list. Like mm. very, very consumed with it. So I imagine they looked up, they saw the helm station. What what did they see, Mia? You see the station has all the different readouts you would need. Absolutely. What's what's Absco's preferred method of control? Is it joystick or wheel or <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think that it would be two joysticks. Trackpad. <laughs> Trackpad. Oh, roll ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roll ball. No, actually, yeah. yes. No, be, there's your, be, there's be, the, be roll ball. <laughs> the, the, the pair of joysticks with all the, all the various buttons. You've got the, the touch screen with the hollow vid HUDs, and you can even see sitting there the headset that you know you would put on and have the, the HUD Mm -hmm. in the one eye giving you all of these neat little details about everything I mean it is, it's beautiful at, at this point Epsco is kind of done with the charm and the novelty and they're like yes yes good good I'm I'm very happy that they've done their extensive research on all of this and then they sit down in the chair like just kind of very matter of factly and are pouring over the list I look at Jay and I say okay I think next is to see a, a ready room and perhaps quarters and then I think if you'll give us a few minutes to discuss, we can go from there. Absolutely. She'll finish up the tour, giving you guys a, a tour of quarters there. The average crew member's quarters are fairly roomy, but not overly so. They're about the same as they were on the uh, on the Zephyr. Captain's quarters, though, the officer's quarter is the best. I mean, the captain's quarters takes up like six regular quarter quarter berths with That's a lot. Yeah, it all but could function as a, as a secondary bridge. Okay. Including a personal, including a personal study that's you know like a third of the room, and then the officers' quarters are at least double the size of one of the regular crew quarters. They're not super luxuriously furnished, but you know they're comfortable with plenty of space for you to put whatever knickknacks you would like to set up your room however you would like. And you do have a ready room right off the bridge, conference table, all of that, everything you would expect. Let's just call everyone back together and then say once everyone's together, just say so what do we think? Are we in? Absolutely. Oh, I'm in. And they push a button on their comms unit and Jay gets a ping about the vendor on uh, Absalom Station who cut them a good deal and says, you'll find someone who needs to get a good deal on imports. Nice. Mordax. This is very exciting. I, I don't know that I trust the lady. I feel like... I'm a little worried that, I don't know, maybe you guys are really, really good. I don't actually know that much about you, but I really kind of feel like, uh, I don't know, this is all really scary and really big. And, and I'm just hoping that they're not just, you know, sending a bunch of random people, us, you know, t to to die. But there's a lot of really cool equipment and I really like bra. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the whole random thing is quite accurate and die? Well, we hope not. I mean, but I will say that the adventures we've been on so far, at least this way we'd be more equipped to deal with them than we have been previously. And it's not as if anything's going to change for Obsco and I as far as having to deal with Solomon and, or I'm sorry, 18 and Evelyn. That's that's something that we're stuck with. So yeah, I mean, Inspiring you, words from your captain. <laughs> <laughs> honest <laughs> words. I mean, you folks are... Sorry, clearly, go ahead, Mordex. But you folks are clearly already, you know, really accomplished adventurers. I think I'll just, you know, if you're willing to give me some tips, then then I think I think we'll be all right. You're not going to hold that whole, uh, you kind of saw me have a total panic uh, uh, thing against me. Are you, since now you're, you're a captain? <laughs> no, everything will be just <laughs> fine as long as I don't fall on my own face. All right. With that said, Eos, I'm assuming you're already in because... You'd already signed on before you even knew about any of this. I'm already in, but uh, I'll be honest, if I'm not looking for strings, I'm sure that we may get some interesting orders in the future, but we'll see what, where it takes us. Okay, so I'll call him Jay and say, okay, we've decided. We're in. Let's talk about next steps. Welcome aboard your ship, Captain. What are we going to christen her? We're certainly not calling 
her the bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> and with that question, that is the end of our time for today. For Experience Points, I am your host and GM, Miu. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Miu Plays Games. I'm Kelric. You can find me on Twitter at EQ Points or at Cormalon. I'm Britt, and you can find me everywhere, primarily Twitter at Atomic Firebird. I'm Kenny. You can find me on Twitter at Punder Drone. I'm Steph, and you can find me on Twitter at Luna Starwind. And we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.